Hi, I'm Mike Phillips from Phillips Hot Rods and Customs in downtown Pennsylvania. Today we're going to do a quick video on how to make a paper pattern. What I have here is a handmade fender for a custom 1956 Ford cab over engine. A customer of mine is building his own truck, he's making it a dually. So we made the fenders for him with all the original styling cues of a 1956 Ford fender. Only the inside tire clearance is 21 inches so it can fit his two tires. So we're going to make a pattern of this fender that I already created in order to make an accurate duplicate for the other side of the truck. So the most important things you need in order to make a paper pattern is just standard body shot masking paper. You can buy this by the roll, Eastwood sells it. We're also going to use the sheet metal layout set. This has everything you need in order to make an accurate paper pattern. You can also buy these magnets from Eastwood. That's what you're going to use to hold your, your paper on. Some other tools you're going to need is a carpenter's pencil, some fine line tape, some scissors, and a radius gauge. So we're going to make a pattern of this side of the fender. This fender is made out of four different pieces. So I need to make this exact same panel so the other fender matches. We're going to make this panel from here, just past the middle of our radius, and down. So cover that whole area with one sheet of paper. We'll hold it in place with a couple magnets. Adjust the paper so you have plenty of paper on both sides. And that you don't end up falling short somewhere. Right, once the paper is on, we'll trim off all the, all the excess with a razor blade just so it's not fighting us. It's really important that your pa paper pattern is extremely accurate. The panel that you create will never be any better than the paper pattern. So it's important that you take your time, make sure all your lines are in the right spot, all your marks are in the right spot. Because if you do the paper wrong, you're going to end up doing the metal wrong. So you want to evaluate your shape and <clears throat> find what area is going to have all the shrink and stretch. You can tell by the way the paper wrinkles. Try to find the spot where it lays pretty flat. Get that section to have no wrinkles in the paper. So make sure the paper is pulled nice and tight. It's not bunched up. Get all the wrinkles out of it. And start getting some magnets in those spots to hold it down. Pull the paper tight, no wrinkles. Now you can see that the paper lays fairly flat here. It's not trying to bunch up. That tells us that there's not a whole lot of shape right here. It has a little, little curve downward, but there isn't any shape to it side to side. This side of the fender is fairly flat. It's where the running board attaches. You can see on this side the paper is trying to wrinkle up. So I'll show you what you need to do there in a moment in order to get that to lay flat. So an important neat little tool you can make is take a carpenter's pencil and carve the side of it off to expose the lid. Using a pencil like this works really good for making patterns because you can find the edges of your metal. So that's the edge of our panel. Just so all this extra paper is not fighting us, I'm going to cut this a little shorter. Get all the extra off. I'm 
having large amounts of excessive paper hanging off while you're trying to make the pattern ends up putting extra wrinkles into the, the panel that aren't necessary and it can cause some confusion when you're making your panel. So don't have any extra paper that you don't need. Let's find this bottom edge. You pull the paper down. Get as many of the wrinkles out of as you can. We'll leave a little bit of extra paper here, but just a little bit. <clears throat> All the shape on this panel is in this radius right here. So we'll find the spots that lay flat by themselves. So I'm going to get all this extra material. I can pull this a little tighter just by moving these magnets. I'm going to work all the wrinkles out of the paper. Using more magnets to hold down. Now you can see right here is where all the extra material, all the extra paper starts to wrinkle up. It stops right in this area. So I'm going to pin that down with some more magnets. Now I know from this, from this area over is where the paper starts to bunch up. That's where the panel starts to curve. Paper and metal do the exact same thing. If paper won't lay flat and wants to bunch up, the metal is going to try to bunch up if you try to turn it around the same corner. So that's what we need to figure out is how to get this paper to lay flat. In the middle here, we can pull this around pretty smooth without, without too many wrinkles. Now this area is wrinkled a little bit. If you notice when we first started, the fender curves down and under in this corner. And the paper is showing that by the extra material that wants to bunch up here. That means that the metal there has to shrink. Same thing here. The fender comes up this way. It also comes around this way. And there's a separate radius that blends into the side. All these radiuses all come together in this one corner. The paper pattern is going to tell us exactly how much shrink and where to put it in the exact location. In order to get this paper to lay flat here, we're going to have to cut slits into it, let it fold underneath itself, and then pin it down with a magnet. So you take your razor blade. You can find the area where the paper starts to bunch up which is right about in here. That's where the radius starts. So we're going to cut the paper from there out into a slit. In order to get this delay, this area needs some shrink as well. Right in this area. So now you see, before that wouldn't lay flat. Now that the paper is allowed to overlap itself, it'll lay flat now without any wrinkles, but it's overlapped. That indicates this area needs to have the metal shrunk. You can also simulate a little shrink by stretching radius up on the far side of that corner there. Now this lays down now, and we're going to have to put some more cuts in the paper up here in order to get this to lay. And this area right here is fighting me a little bit. This is too wide. We actually need to do one in the middle there in order to get that to lay down. So 
you need lots of magnets. Okay, now that we have the slits in the paper, this whole entire corner lays nice and smooth without being rippled or bunched up. If it's a small area, you can get away with not cutting the paper and just creating a fold and tucking it on itself and pinning it down with a magnet. So now that we have this side pinned down, 99% of the wrinkles are out of it. There's still a couple wrinkles here. That indicates that this area would need to be pumped up a little bit with a little bit of stretch after this corner is shrunk around. Now the fender comes down and turns under this area, so we need to do a lot of shrinking in this area to get this extra material out as well. So start pulling the paper in that direction. Start pinning it with a few more magnets. And then we're going to have to cut this paper open. The shrink starts about this area is where the paper starts to bunch up. So now that we have that slit cut in it, that section lays nice. The corner like this is why it's important that we don't have all that extra paper hanging off the bottom because all that extra paper would be fighting us trying to get this corner to lay in. I tend to just leave about an extra inch of paper in case I need to shift the pattern a little bit after I start making it. I have a little material there to do so without having to start over. All right, so we have that corner pulled down tight now as well. Now that we have the paper laying flat with no wrinkles, fitting exactly how we're gonna make the metal fit, we need to find the start and stop points of all the radius and all the highlight lines. The easiest way to find that is with a radius gauge. So first we'll work on this, this radius right here. So figure out what the radius is. So this is almost a three inch radius. Now the easiest way to find where the radius starts and stops is put a radius gauge on here so it fits nice and tight. And if you slide the gauge just until it starts to come off the panel, you see the air gap. So find the gauge that fits and slide it just until it starts to come off and create an air gap. Go just back until it fits again. Right there is the corner where the radius starts. Now do the same thing to find where the radius ends. Slide the gauge over until it starts to pull off the panel. Go back just till it fits again. That's where the radius ends. So go around the whole radius. Make those marks. And you can map out this corner fairly accurately and know exactly where and how deep you need to shrink the metal. Once you start getting higher up on this panel, that three inch radius blends into a four and then continu continues to blend out into a 12. So once you start getting to the area where the three doesn't fit anymore, move up to the next size. So this panel quickly goes from a three to a four to a six. and eventually turns to a 12.
Okay, so we just mapped out the radius of this corner and this corner. At this point, <clears throat> that's as deep as I would want to shrink. I would shrink right to that line. Now the panel does have a little more shape after that. I would actually stretch that area up as opposed to trying to shrink the whole thing down. Once we have that line on there, you can map it all out. You can draw it on. This outside beginning point is going to end up being more of a trim line than a bending than bending information. This corner shrinks down around. I'm also going to draw a line on here that indicates how deep the shape goes on this corner. So it makes it easier to blend all these different radiuses all together in this one location so that they flow. All these different radiuses all have to flow together and work together joining at the same spot without looking harsh or abrupt or having any flat spots. So we have the shape of the fender this way coming around. We have this radius that comes down the fender, tapers around this corner and comes this way at the same time that this blends in and goes down this way. And the shape of the fender this way comes around. So all this is happening in this one corner. This corner is really what makes this, this panel work properly and look correct. If it's not done right, it won't look like a part that was original. It'll look aftermarket. A key point on making any aftermarket custom parts is you want to make it look like it's supposed to be there. and then it was meant for that truck. It's not a universal part that fits 10 different vehicles. It looks period correct. All the lines are right. All the shapes are right. All the curves are right. All right, so that pretty much does it for the actual paper pattern itself. Now we need to take all this information that we made on this pattern. This is our 100% accurate roadmap to making this out of metal. All these lines are in the right spot. You follow the road map and your panel will fit perfect first try. So let's get this laid down on a piece of sheet metal. I'll show you how to transfer these lines to a piece of metal underneath it accurately and map all that information out onto a blank. Right, so you have your paper pattern magnetized down your fresh blank. All the wrinkles out. All the folds are back flat how they would be before you cut them. The first thing I usually do is just take a sharpie, trace the outside. We know we already left a little extra material. If I made the paper pattern real accurate, I would put notes on here, add an inch here, add an inch there for extra material, but we left it, we left the paper pattern large already. This part does not need to be accurate by any means. Just going to trace the outside so we can rough cut that off. When the time comes to trim this accurately, we will scribe it and hand shear the trim line for weld. Now we need to get all this information <clears throat> through the paper and onto our blank. The way I like to do it the best, especially with steel, Quickest and easiest way to do it is take the automatic center punch that comes in the layout kit, put it on your line, start transferring these little dimples. You can tune the center punch down by adjusting the spring on the end. 
so it doesn't make a large gouge in your panel. In the tight corners, put them a lot closer together. You can see by this pattern how this radius tightens up in this corner, how it comes around and tightens up narrower. I'm also going to transfer the line so I know where the actual edge of the panel is. And I know what's just extra material hanging off. So the nice thing about using the center punch is we made this pattern from the fender I made for the passenger side of the truck. We're now making the driver side rear fender. So we actually have to have this pattern upside down in order to make the other side of the truck. Well, since my lines are on this side, if I transferred the paper over and then mapped it out on the metal, I wouldn't be able to see the lines that I drew on here. By using the center punch, the little dimple will show through to the opposite side of the steel panel, and then we can find those marks easily. So we have everything mapped out. We can go ahead and take the pattern off. Now you'll see all these marks. So we're going to flip this over. We'll be able to see these little tiny dimples on the other side and follow them. So now that we have the panel flipped upside down, you can see the center punch marks left a small dimple mark on the back of the panel. We're going to follow those marks with a roll of fine line tape. I like using this eighth inch fine line tape. You can buy it at Eastwood. So if you get down and look at it with the light just right, You can see your marks and you can lay your tape down right across all your marks and follow it right around the corner. That's the center of our radius. We also mapped out the bottom. And we mapped out the back edge just so we know where it is. So that's the easiest way I've found to transfer marks not only through the paper onto my blank, but using that center punch also makes it possible to see the marks on the opposite side of the panel, which really helps when you're making an, an opposite panel as opposed to duplicating an existing panel. The reason I like using that, that tape is the edge of that tape is nice and easy to follow with a scribe. The scribe comes in the Eastwood layout kit. You can put the scribe right on the edge of that tape and it's fairly easy to just lock it in the edge of that tape. And run your scribe along there accurately. Get a nice perfect line. I know the radius needs to be pumped up a little bit here with a little bit of extra stretch. <clears throat> now we can safely take this tape off and the scribe will be, will be there as well. So we'll trim this off with the power shears. We'll use the power shears because we know we have an extra inch of material and it does not need to be that accurate. We'll get all this extra meat out of the way that we don't want. We're working on this side. A lot of times I'll take a Sharpie and just write top on there so I know I'm working the right side of the panel from the beginning. We'll take this tape off now and you'll be able to see that scribe line that was left and you'll see how nice and straight and accurate it is. So we're going to take our paper pattern, we're going to put it back on here. We're working on the back side now so we're going to flip this over.
We'll lay this on. On our marks. And we're going to transfer over just with a Sharpie mark where we had to start cutting this paper. because We know all the shrink is centralized in that neighborhood and right here. So we know we're not going to need to do much shrinking past this area because the paper did not have to be slit and brought over on itself in order to get that to lay flat on the original panel. So we know there's almost no shrink in this area. It was just form put into the panel in order to make the corner. But as that corner comes around the bend, that material needs to be shrunk. So we know that all the shrink is going to be between there and this area. And down here, it's all going to be between here and here. So we know that all the shrinking on this panel is going to be in that corner there. in that corner there. So I'll just put those on with Sharpie because once we start pulling our first shrinks in, that's going to leave a, an obvious zone where we started shrinking. We'll just stay within that area. Anywhere outside of where the, the cuts in the paper were, we know that area does not need any shrink. So we won't have to pull that material together in order to get it lay flat and look smooth on the panel. So now we have those areas mapped out we can go ahead and pull the tape off, which will reveal our scribe mark. All right, now we have all of our information transferred onto this blank of steel. We know exactly where to shrink, where to stretch, where to trim in order to make that panel as accurately as possible. If you didn't make a paper pattern and you didn't put all these marks on, you'd start off shaping metal aimlessly. You wouldn't know where you were heading, how much shrink to put where, where to stop shrinking, where to start, start stretching. So with this roadmap on the blank of steel, it tells us everything we need to know to make an accurate panel right the first time. So I hope this lesson helped you guys out. Check me out, Mike Phillips, Phillips Hot Rods and Customs in Dinatown, Pennsylvania. Check out eastwood.com for all the products you need in order to make these patterns possible and all the other products you need in order to restore your car.